it's going to have a radius that goes up to the height of the graph. Okay? So this time, um, when we take a look, our volume, it's going to be summing up all these little infinitely small disks. So it's pi r squared, and it's going to be root sine x all squared. And it tells me again that the bounds are from 0 to pi. So that's where uh, I'm going to write the integral bounds. Sorry, yes, question? Well, I'm not sure that this one will, we'll, we'll double check it. I don't think this is going to turn out to be the same as the volume of a sphere because it's, it's a sine graph. It's not the circular, uh, uh, I'll show you the equation coming up in this block for a circle, but it's not quite the same here. So you, even though it looks like it, you can't just guess it that way. If that's, you know, fair enough, right? I mean, maybe you think it looks like a semicircle, but you do have to verify it. So this will be um, pi integral from zero to pi of sine x dx. So again, really simple integral to take. I'm not, I'm not, I'm going to stop here. Okay. At this point, I assume that you're okay to do these integrals. I'm not going to take our class's time to do the simple integrals. I'm going to spend most of our time working on these pictures. Okay. So that is the, the key here in this uh, topic of volume is that we get comfortable with the revolutions and the pictures. Okay. The, the integrals tend to be simpler. So uh, um, anyway, I, I, I'm pretty sure it works out to be 2 pi. It does, I don't think it is the same. Uh, I think the area here is 2 pi, whereas a sphere is normally um, 4 thirds pi r cubed, and the radius here is pi over 2. So when you put, put that in, I don't think it's going to work out to be the same as a, uh, so that's going to be pi over 8. So yeah, it's not going to work out to be the same as 2 pi. I'm pretty sure it works out to be 2 pi. So, but. Okay, find the volume obtained by rotating the graph about the line bounded by y equals 1. So this time we're not rotating it about the x-axis, so you have to make sure your picture reflects that fact that you're going around the line y equals 1. So all I want you to do is I want you to try and come up with the right picture for this. Okay. And the challenge is going to be, can you come up with what is the radius function? How do we d describe this radius in terms of x? Okay? So see if you can do that, and then we'll come back to this question. Okay, so hopefully you have a picture that looks something like this. It starts up here, uh, one over, one down. This is uh, zoomed in about as much as you can for this example. And on this side... And the line y equals 1, which will be here. Okay, so the region that I'm thinking about rotating is this one in here. Only now when I rotate it, it's going to happen around this line here. So it's not like it was before on the x-axis. So our, it's not as straightforward to find the radius. So again, we want a good picture so that we can label it and say, what will it look like? If I put a rectangle here, and I'm about to spin it around that line, okay? So first of all, again, uh, to, just because we're, do, we're doing the x-axis so far, the width of this is going to get infinitesimally small with respect to x. So we're still integrating with respect to x, okay? How do I figure out what is this radius function here? Like, How do I get a function for that radius? One suggestion I'd heard was, um, well, it's half of the whole thing. What do you think? Yeah, half doesn't work so well because over here, that is definitely not half of the, all the way up. Sure, Nick? Uh, yeah, actually, how did you get that? Exactly. So this piece here, at 1, we're taking it away from what was the radius. So the radius used to be 2 minus x squared, but we're going to subtract 1 because here we've removed it from what would have been rotated. Okay? So this time I can come up with my integral. It goes from negative 1 over here to positive 1 over here. 
and it is the integral of 2 minus x squared dx, but of course that should all be squared. And so this is pi r squared that I'm rotating to get the volume of this figure. Okay, so it would be enough to, uh, you know, maybe we can go one more step with it, but at this point we could put it in the, uh, it's a pretty simple integral, so as I said, I won't spend uh, the class's time here doing that integral. Was there a question? Yes? Oh, of course. Yeah. <laughs> said one thing and meant another thing. I forgot to collect my like terms here, right? So um, if I take one away, this should have been a one. So, yeah, my apologies. That should have been a one. So that should be a... Uh, uh, one. I think that's okay now, I hope. Okay. So anyways, yeah, my apologies. When I take one away from two, that's what I should have had there. Okay. So now, uh, again, hopefully you're seeing this, how important the picture is. The integrals, they're typically like this. It's not very difficult. It's the picture that we struggle with. So we're going to take a look at the washer method, okay? The washer method is identical in theory. Um, does anybody know what I'm talking about when I say a washer? Yeah, a disc with a hole. Not what you put your dishes or your clothes in, but uh, the kind of thing that you would use with nuts and bolts. So a washer like this. So what you basically want to think of in order, to, you know, it's not worth memorizing these. Like I said in the first one, pi r squared, we're adding up all the slices. So if you ignore this part of it, that's the disk method right there. Okay? What we're doing now is we're taking the disk method and I'm removing this middle piece so that all I have is a washer, meaning there's a hole in the middle now. So that's what it is. This is the large radius, so we labeled it with a capital R. This is the small radius, so we labeled it with a small r. Okay, so take away the small radius from the big one. So to illustrate how this method works, um, we're going to take a look at square root x and x squared. So you may want to bring those up on your graphing calculator. I'm going to uh, copy them down onto my page. something like that anyways, um, for the two graphs. So now you'll notice that when I go to rotate this figure around, okay, it's going to have a hole in the middle. Because if I put one of my rectangles here, say this is the slice that I'm going to add up, when I rotate it, I now have a gap right here. This is all a gap. Okay, so as it spins around, you're going to end up with gap again, and the rest of your rectangle, I guess it's a little longer than that. But you're going to have a gap as it spins. So now when you picture it, it's not only a circle, but someone's punched a hole through the circle. And we know how to measure this gap. Okay. What's the height of the gap in this example? How could you describe how big that gap is? It's the x squared graph. That's right. So this is x squared because the bottom graph here, that's the graph that makes the gap. So basically what we're doing is we're taking the large radius, the big one, minus the small one. Okay, so what is the, the taller piece minus the smaller piece? So if we wanted to set up the integral, we rotate this, it would be a very strange looking shape. There's nothing in Greek geometry that would give us the volume for this kind of thing, but it's not that bad of a calculus integral. It's going to be pi. We rotate the bigger piece, the outside piece, so that's going to be um, square root x, which is on top, all squared, and then we take away the smaller radius, which is on the bottom. 